my chains, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Like a flood.
sacrifice on the cross. Thank you that you conquered death and that we can live in your life. Thank you for the light that that brings into the darkness. Even in this season, God, we remember you. We remember you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. Well, we're very glad to see everyone here today in this wonderfully uh, warm, nice uh, winter day. And uh, it says, ironically, as people remember, I'm from Arizona. And uh, I want to say a couple of quick announcements. First of all, I want to say uh, thank you for those of you who have been uh, downloading the app, that's a great thing for us. Uh, we want to make sure that people continue to do that. It's the easiest way of kind of knowing what's going on um, with the church. There's a couple of different ways you can download it. Um, you can just go to any of your app stores and just look up um, church app, the church app. And it has that little icon there, the little white background with a cross in it. And then once you're there, you just search in churches, not media, but search in churches, Put Hope Chicago IL, you'll find it right away, and you'll see it says campuses and also stuff. You hit campuses, go to Midway, and everything is right there for you. It makes everything easier. Isn't that a good thing to have something easier, right? <laughs> so, uh, so we made it a little bit easier for you, and including um, the easier way is also to give online. You know, there's a couple of different ways to give. Obviously, you can give here in person. You can mail it in, um, but the other way is to give it online, and if you have been giving online, um, you need to kind of go in again uh, because we have a new link. So that way you're not having to search Hope Midway offerings and all this other kind of stuff that we had you do before that took forever to kind of figure out. Um, we're trying to streamline everything to make it simpler for you. So you would need to set that up again, which is, again, very easy to do in the church app. Just go right down to give. That's pretty simple. You can also register while you're there for next week's service. 
uh, which is a simple thing to do while you're there. And you can also just do that by going onto our website or looking in the Facebook links and stuff that we put up to register for next week's service. It is the 14th. I promise you it's not going to be a Valentine's Day service, okay? So for all the people in here, like, I don't care about that, don't worry, it's not about that, okay? This is fine. <laughs> so it's okay. Uh, I don't like when people just do things just for the sake of doing a theme, and anyway, yeah, that just drives me nuts. So it's not going to be that. Uh, but anyway, but that'll be for next week, so make sure you sign up for that. The other thing you can see uh, on the website or right away when you go into the church app, when you uh, go there, you'll see before it says campuses, and right below that, it'll say small groups. Now, today you can sign up for a small group um, that you would like to get involved in. The great thing about having multiple campuses is there's multiple different ways of getting to a small group that fits your schedule, whether you're comfortable being in person or online, all those kinds of different things. We have something to help out for you to be able to connect together in community and also to be built up um, as a person. So uh, we have a couple of different things that we're doing here. So again, I'm not doing anything for Valentine's Day here specifically, but we are having a couples group that is starting next week on Valentine's Day there. So hey, there you go. Um, we're also having a, um, a virtual um, online small group happening at the same time on Tuesdays for those who can't meet in person that Michelle Morales is doing, which is awesome. So for those who can't make it down here on a Tuesday, she's going to be doing a small group at the same time. So people are learning and building together. So you can check that out again while you're there. Um, um, so those are two different ones that are just kind of from our campus. Um, if you want to check those out, feel free. Uh, we're also going to have our midweek service. It's going to be downstairs at 7. It's a good time. Uh, I always joke around. I'm like, we're going to do 7 to 8. And it's always like 7, 8, 15. Uh, I, I try. I, I'm really trying. Um, but the, the conversation's good. It's a good conversation. Um, but if you can come, feel free to get involved. Uh, last but definitely not least, when it comes to the announcements, uh, is talking about Galentine's. How many of you guys like Galentine's? So I confused you all. I said guys and I said Galentine's. It was like, we don't know where to raise our hands. All right. Uh, so Galentine's Day, they had an awesome time with it last year. This year, um, it's going to be very, very uh, uh, um, condensed as far as how many people can be there because um, we're trying to follow all CDC guidelines and everything else like that. So if you want to, we have a sign-up sheet downstairs. You can do that um, right when you first come in. Um, you can sign up for that. It's going to be on the 19th, uh, so you want to check that out. It's going to be an awesome time of getting to know each other. We've talked about the importance of community. So ladies, this is a great time of getting within that community getting and bonding. Um, have a great devotional, some games, some prizes you can win, all this other stuff. Uh, it's going to be an excellent time, uh, but we only have X amount of slots, so please sign up quickly. If you're not able to sign up here, you can also sign up online. Um, so feel free to do that. That's in the uh, Bible app, and it's also as far as in the church app as well, ways that you could sign up for that. God bless you. nice and warm, enjoying the sun, but I'm in Chicago where it's cold and this sweater is so itchy. I'm so glad that we could be here today. Glad to be here. I am so sore because you just keep 
exercise, exercise, exercise. Let's go run. Let's go lift weights. Why can't you just relax? You're killing the fat cells. The fat cells need ice cream. Could you just get us some ice cream? Just a little ice cream. How many of you are excited for a brand new series that we're about to begin? These people are lying. It's Super Bowl Sunday. All they're thinking about is buffalo wings and blue cheese dressing and how they're going to get more than their brother or their sister or whoever else is competing with them for the buffalo wings. Well, we're going to be starting a new series called Light in the Dark Months. How about ice cream in the dark months? I think that would be better. I think these people would like some ice cream. I know I would. So with one thing we're looking at is how many people have had some dark months lately. Let's be honest. Blah, 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 blah. I know they're having dark months. I see the prayer request. It's Chicago. It's COVID. People have died. People are hardships. People have lost jobs. And I'm asking dumb questions again. Why did I wear a sweater? <laughs> so we can see that these, that these dark months can be even worse because of our inner monologues. Uh, hold up. Uh, uh, listen, I contribute a lot to this team, okay? All right, tongue, lips, stop the disrespect, okay? I am a very intricate part of this team. Monologues are awesome. So and these monologues are big, and they, they come in part of us, and they help us with the thoughts that come inside, and they start to shape how we think and how we act. Hey, we have a lot of good times. Last night, it could be all, all night. Worry, 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 worry. Regret, regret, regret. Oh, guilt from the past that I God forgave. I'm still feeling guilty about it. Oh, yes, I love it. Worry, 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 regret, worry, regret. Oh, fear for the future, fear for the future. Oh, why do I have to wear this? Ah, the sweater's so scratchy. I hate winter. I wish I was in Arizona eating ice cream. <sighs> So these thoughts come in, and these thoughts start to mess with our minds during the day. I am doing my part to make every day great and to keep you safe. You need to go get a big bubble and hide in the bubble and not see anybody and hide underneath your bed until COVID has passed. And then we look into these times where it shapes our areas, and we say, well, why do I have all this time? When, when can I be able to find the light again? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know where we're going with this. Find the light. Now the Bible verses are coming out. <sighs> Next thing you know, he'll be singing some <sighs> praise God from. Where's that coming from? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, no. Oh, no. This... no I can't take it. Next thing is Bible verses. God is faithful. I don't want to hear this right now. I'm taking a break. You should have gotten some ice cream. We could have had a great day today. Thanks a lot, Bill. <laughs> Try not to laugh and all that was the hardest part. All right. And happy birthday. <laughs> well, it's great to be with you all today. And how many of you guys have your inner monologues going like that crazy all the time? Yeah. Okay, the rest of you are lying. Okay, um, we all have this going on into our mindset. It's how we're built. Our minds just kind of play this little place. And even though we're trying to focus on something else, our minds have these little plays that go on. And, and it's affected in different parts. And without... God, this dark thinking that, from, that comes from our subconscious can affect our actions. So that's what we look at today. It's not just this monologue, but when that monologue gets dark during these dark months, what do we do? And I will say, for those in deep need, we want you to reach out. That's very important. So for those people who are in like a major deep depression or have suicidal thoughts, um, we have some, uh, um, some things for you to see up there on the screen. You can always call 211. That can help you to keep you in contact with things that you need. Um, the suicide prevention hotline, the CARES is an organization that you can help out. All this is in your notes, so if you need to look at it later, I don't want everybody to write this down as fast as humanly possible. This is in your notes. Mental health is an important thing and should be taken as an important thing. But for all of us do deal with this monologue, this monologue that comes into our minds, during these dark months of our lives, these monologues can turn this really dark place and can get us into this dark place. And this darkness, this Fear and this paranoia comes into our monologues and shapes how we live. Why? Because there's real reasons to be worried. And we understand this. It's not like this darkness comes out of nowhere. We comes out from real places. But should this darkness consume us? That's what we're going to look at today. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? That's a very hard verse for a lot of us to deal with, because we're saying, 
yeah, they're not going to add a moment to my life, but they're hard to ignore when all you see is the darkness around you. How can you miss that? Yes, that shouldn't be all that we're focusing on, but how can you ignore it when it's right in front of you? What can you do? We're going to talk about this on how to not get stuck in this dark thinking. And so if you want to turn to Isaiah 8 in your phones, it's in the Bible app, or uh, look in your Bibles themselves. It's going to be in Isaiah 8 today. And we're going to look at one of Jerusalem's dark months. This is one of their dark months that they had. It's a very dark month for a lot of reasons. At this time, Israel split into two different kingdoms. You had the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. There was this uh, country um, called Assyria that was taking over and was coming down to the southern kingdom. They had already attacked and um, enslaved and took over the people of the northern part of Israel. They were already into the northern part of the southern area of Israel. So they had real worries that they had. They're, they had dark months for reasons. You see, and this is the hardest thing when we have these dark thoughts is that we say, well, there's reasons I have these dark thoughts. There's a reality. There's a reality to this. It's not like I just have some dark thoughts from nowhere, like my inner monologue is just making stuff up, but there's real things to be thinking about. And so this is the same thing that Israel's seeing right now. And they say, we have real reasons to have this dark time in our lives. So what does God tell them to do during these dark months? Isaiah 8, starting at verse 11. So the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do. Don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. He is the one you should fear. He is the one who should make you tremble. I mean, imagine society living this way. No group think, people actually thinking for themselves, No conspiracy theories driving people nuts. Putting God first, our country would look really different if this is how we thought. Amen? Everything else would be different. Even in the dark months, like things like COVID and other stuff like this that are out of our control would be different if we thought this way. And we didn't stay in the darkness of this monologues that come into our minds. I mean, think about it. This would be an amazing thing, but it's not something that we see. Because during these dark months, people do irrational things. They start off well, but then they get in this dark monologue starts to play out. We've seen this over this last year. We think of some things that happened that were good conversations to have. You know, for instance, social issues. People are like, we're going to talk about social issues. People are like, great, this is a good time that we're going to talk about this. And then inner monologue got into people's heads and they started writing and stealing and all this other kind of stuff. And the conversation stopped. So something that started off as a good conversation to have ended because some people were following their dark monologue and stuck in that dark place and stopped the conversation. Even a month ago, we see people that were wanting to talk about election results that end up storming the Capitol. How idiotic can you get at that point? That shows you what they were listening to. That shows you what they were thinking. They were just listening to all these dark thoughts inside their minds and said, hey, let's go in here. And once they got in there, they're like, now we don't know what to do. Why? Because people aren't thinking it through. They're just paying attention. They're stuck in that darkness. They're hearing that inner monologue and say, well, let's just act because it's been fed this whole time. You might say, well, that's just some, a few different people that are doing some idiotic stuff. Yes, but how many of us are being fed with the same garbage? And this goes from whatever political spectrum you're at, from whatever kind of social issue type mentality you have, we can feed into some darkness that's in us that's going to affect our actions. It's a big part. But the important thing for us to know is we control a lot of this darkness to our monologue. I love this quote. It says, whoever is in your ear is going to steer. I love that quote. It's not mine. It's a good one, though. But I mean, that's such an awesome thing. What lies are we allowing in? What things are we allowing to shape our inner monologue as we go throughout the day? What kind of stuff are we doing? What are we allowing in at this time? You know, for myself, I've taken a break from uh, certain YouTube channels and podcasts and stuff like that just because I've realized, I'm like, this is affecting how I'm thinking. I just realized that as a personal set. You know, I'm somebody, I want to find out what everybody feels. So I look at like far left and far right of all different news and um, opinions and all sorts of kind of stuff. And I do that daily so I can try to see where everybody's at mentality wise. But there are certain ones I'm like, this is just starting to affect me. I need to get away from this. I think there's a lot of times we have to say, well, I, what's coming in my ear? Is this steering me in a way that I need to go? Or do I need to let this out of my life? You know, and having that self-check is an important thing. 
Because we have to look, who has your ear? This is the warning God is giving. Don't think like everyone else. For us to say we want society to be different, well, society starts with us. So we can't be thinking like everyone else. I mean, God is telling them, don't go down that road that they're going. Don't go down that road. Because these roads lead to all these things, conspiracy theories and, and things that make people tremble in fear. These are the things that God was warned against. This, this is the roads that you're going to be at if you continue down this. You might be sitting here saying, well, pastor, it's reality. That's what these roads are, are pointing out. No, this is the reality. I want us to see this. Reality is the more that we focus our thoughts on God, the less we worry. This is important. If we're going to be focusing in, again, whoever has your ear is going to steer. So if we're fearing God, we're saying, well, God, I'm looking to you and not looking at these other things more. It's not these things are all going to disappear, but I'm going to look at you first. I'm going to turn on that light. Instead of staying in the darkness, I'm going to turn on your light. Because this is an important question for us. Who has more power, God or the government? God or your circumstance? God or your health? God or your future? God or society? But how many times do we think about that when our inner monologue goes? We know the answer here at church, but are we living? That's important for us. Yes, there is real reasons to fear, but there's a real father who loves you Amen. and cares about you. And we can't forget this and allow everything else to get into our ear and steer us. This is why Jesus tells us not to worry. Let's go back to Matthew 6 and look at that in context. He says this, verse 25. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? These are things that we miss when we get into groupthink and, and start to focus on conspiracies and fears and all these other stuff. We forget the value that we have to God. We miss this. We'll forget what God has. This is something God doesn't want us to do. He wants us to remember. So how can we keep thinking about God when we're in this darkness? When we're actually saying, well, this is the reality that's around us. I know I'm supposed to focus on God, but this is what's happening around me. Because again, like we said in Israel, in Isaiah 8, they had a real reason to worry. Israel had a real reason. Well, let's look back at and see what we can do when we're in this area. Isaiah 8, 16 said, Preserve the teachings of God and trust his instructions to those who follow me. I will wait for the Lord who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob. I will put my hope in him. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to focus in on God. I know there's a situation that's happened because of what people's decisions that they've made of not following him. I understand there's things that are happening. This darkness has come from a real place. I get this, but I'm going to follow God. I'm going to start to look at what his word says more than ever. And I'm going to encourage people to do that more than ever. Because again, whoever has your ear is going to steer. So the more that we look into God's word, guess who has your ear? Amen. God. It's his voice that we hear. If you want to actually follow the right way and follow the direction God has for your life, we have to focus on that. We have to allow that to see it. I mean, we have to think about this. Why am I living in darkness when God gives me light? Why would I do that? Why would I have that? And it's up to us to see this. But in order to leave the darkness, we have to get directions toward the light. It's an important thing for us to think about. If I want to leave the darkness, I need to know where I'm going to get to this light. So I think about my sons, and both of them needed nightlights. And I always joked around, I'm like, my kids are never going to be afraid of the dark. They're going to learn, and they're going to be very logical, and there's nothing to fear. And they're never going to need a nightlight unless they need to know to go where the bathroom is. So maybe I'll put a light just outside so they can see that. You know, and that was my mentality, because I was going to have the most logical, rational kids ever on the face of the earth. That was my plan. Um, <laughs> Didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> and my youngest in particular is a big fan of nightlights. Like, you go into his room, it's like a disco or something like that. It's insane. There's more light in his room than outside his room. It's insane. And it's not that he's afraid of the dark anymore. He just really likes light, you know? And, like, I mean, he's got a Bluetooth speaker with things. I mean, like, just crazy amounts of light. He's all about it. And that's his thing now. But it started off with him being afraid of the dark. And why are we afraid of the dark? It couldn't, I couldn't rationally tell him you turn off the lights, everything's the same, then the lights are on. I was trying to rationally tell him that, but the fear was still there. Why? Because it's fear of the unknown. That's the same thing that happens to us when we're living in dark days. We're saying, well, there's fear of the unknown. I'm not seeing what's happening. 
All I'm hearing is the noises all around me of society and the news and everything else like that. I'm hearing all this noise around me, and I'm freaking out, thinking what's out in there in the dark. This is why we need to look to the light of God's word and say, I need you to shine this out here because you know what? I'm afraid because I'm hearing all this other stuff. I need to make sure that you're here with me. I need to know that you are present in this situation. So I know I have no reasons to fear. It's important. But unfortunately, it seems like people are looking everywhere but to God for help in these dark months. You're doing the same kinds of things that the people in Jerusalem are doing. Back to Isaiah 8, verse 19 says, Someone may say to you, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead with their whisperings and mutterings. They'll tell us what to do. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Shouldn't the living seek guidance from the dead? So this is important for us to see. False lights only lead to false hope. If we're looking around for other people outside of God to give us some guidance, we're going to be lost. We're going to be more lost than we were before. But that's what we see, people trying to chase after false light. So mediums here are like fortune tellers and stuff. We see people following after false prophets, people even following celebrities to try to find the light for crying out loud. That's scary. But people are doing this. I'm going to look for everywhere else in the world to try to find some light, to find some hope, because I'm just feeling darkness. I'm just trying to see if anyone has an answer. So what are they doing? They follow somebody else who's in the darkness. It doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, these people, they have no light. They're spiritually dead. Yet I'm going to feel, I'm going to somehow find some light in these people. They have no light, and they're in the darkness themselves. Isaiah 8.20 expands on this a little bit more. It says this, Look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. They will go from one place to another, weary and hungry. Because they were hungry, they will rage and curse their king and their God. They will look up to heaven and down to earth, but wherever they look, they will be, there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. They will be thrown out into the darkness. I want to get directions away from the dark, from someone in the dark who's got this kind of a worldview. It doesn't seem to make sense, yet that's what most people are doing. I'm feeling I'm lost in the dark. I'm looking for any kind of voice that's out there, and I'm just going to grab on and hold on to any voice that I can hear right now. And there's the problem. It's a major problem. It's why the dark months have dragged on for so many. Why? Because they're not, they're seeing who's controlling their monologue, people who are stuck in the dark themselves. Matthew 5, 15, 14 says this, They are blind guides leading the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. There might be promises that we'll hear of follow me for good change and for happiness and for what you want to hear. You know, there'll be a lot of promises for these types of things. But the truth is, they're exactly what Isaiah described. Weary, hungry, and completely in the dark. So where do you think our minds are going to go if we're following that kind of a voice? We're going to be weary, spiritually hungry, and completely in the dark, which I think would easily describe our society today. So how do we get out of this? It's because these kind of voices, they're not looking to God for help, as Isaiah was talking about, but they're just in hostility to God. They're stuck in their despair, not wanting to look at him at all. So we don't know where not to look at for light, but where do we actually see the light? Where do we see hope? Because the interesting thing is if you're looking in your Bible, you're seeing, well, this is where the chapter ends, and it ends on such a down note, like there is no hope at all. They're lost in these these dark months, and now they have no help of getting out. Well, it's an important thing for all of us to know. We added the chapters and verses. That story wasn't done. God didn't just stop there and be like, yeah, Israel, you are so in trouble. This is where society is going. Everything is going downhill. I don't know what to say. You guys have been following the wrong people. Everybody's been hearing these wrong voices. It's getting them all in the wrong place. It doesn't end there. It continues on. So let's go to Isaiah 9, verse 1. It says this, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. 
So these cities were at the top part that was getting attacked, and they were starting to worry, these, these two major cities. He's worried, and they're saying, well, what's going to happen? We're in this darkness. What are we going to do? But it's important for us to know is what God points out here. Yes, the darkness will not last forever, but there's purpose in the darkness. For them, it was humility. It was humility at this point. They need to learn to humble themselves and not to say, hey, we got it all. We, we got everything all figured out. We got everything all together. We don't need God. I mean, that was our society before everything with Corona hit, right? You know, yeah, we got it all figured out. Everything's good. We got it all. It's not a big problem. It's not a big problem. We got everything figured out. We know what we're doing. And then as soon as something like that hits, we're like, whoa, we had no plans. <laughs> we don't know what's going on. And I hope that people don't just say, well, we're stuck here in the darkness. I'm just feeling more and more dark. But actually say, what am I learning in the midst of this darkness? Are we, are we looking? Are we pausing to see if there's some purpose? Don't be so quick to try to leave the darkness that we miss the lessons. So things we don't want to repeat. Yeah. There's certain things that God's wanting to teach us during these times. Because we can't live in fear of the dark forever. I mean, imagine my kids when they get married and they have like all the night lights on. <laughs> I did something really wrong as a parent. <laughs> so, but it would show there's no maturity that ever happened. Yes, you might be in a place where you're just saying, God, I just need to know you're there. I just need that night light on. I, I just need that right now. But for others, God is calling us to mature even beyond that and say, hey, you need something more. Because we, what we see when we actually gain uh, this opportunity to look at what God's doing is we gain faith that we have nothing to worry as we wait. Yes, there's darkness here, but the light's going to shine, and so I'm going to wait and pause. While I'm not seeing the light right now, I'm going to pause and say, God, what are you doing? And that's a mature thing to try to do. To actually have that part where we can pause and say, God, what are you doing right now? That's not an easy thing to do. But you can't mature unless you actually have the opportunity to mature. So God might be putting you through something right now for your good. Not to test you, but to help you to grow. Help you to grow to be the person you need to be, who you want to be. Amen. Not that person who's 30-something and having nightlights all over. But somebody's saying, no, I know I can trust when the lights go off, I have nothing to worry about, just as much as I don't have to worry about when the lights are on. To have that same kind of mentality. We have to ask ourselves, are we doing this? Because even as adults, though, we still need to see where we're going. It's not out of fear, but it's out of getting direction. So it's still important for us to look for the light. Because we've got to see where we're wanting to go next, and not just be stuck there. But it's important for us to look into this. So what do we do this? How do we get out of this darkness after the lesson that we learned? How do we get away from this thinking, this monologue that's in our minds? Isaiah 9.2 says this. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. What is this light that this is talking about? Well, if you have some time later, I want to encourage you to, to check out Matthew 4, 13 through 17 and see this is describing Jesus. In fact, he even said, as Isaiah said, and has these exact verses talking about what Jesus was going to do. But it's important for us to know, yes, Jesus is the light of the world, but is he, is he the light in your world? Amen. It's a big distinction. And I, I can say the answer is Jesus all day long. But if he's not the one who's speaking into my monologue, yeah. then he's not my answer. He's the answer, but he's not my answer. You know, one of the biggest things that I get to talk with people who say, you know, I, I came from a religious background or I grew up religious or, you know, my family was involved in the church and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's, that's awesome that you had that upbringing. Thank God for that. But is he your God? Is he your Savior? Do you have a relationship with him? I mean, I'm great that you have some knowledge. I'm great that you had some stuff in your family. I'm great for all that. But is he yours? This is how we see it. This is how we see the difference. Is he the one who's in our monologue, or is it just us and our fears and conspiracy theories and everything else that, like that that God was warning his people against? Are we looking to the light of our world? Whose voice are we hearing? Because we're hearing Jesus' voice. We're not going to be ruled by fear, conspiracies, or dread. Now, I'm not saying that Christians don't ever think these things, that these things don't come into our minds. I'm not trying to say that for a second, but we're not ruled by them. The enemy could try to chatter all day long, but we just have to have God's voice being louder. 
That's when we stop and we pray and say, okay, God, this is where my mind's going. I know it's not where it's supposed to go, so I need to concentrate on you. Having those times of pausing is good. I'm not trying to say you're a less of a Christian if you have those thoughts. We all deal with different warfare. But it's saying, I know who I can win with, and I'm going to focus in on God and let his voice be the loudest. That's the difference. And when we realize what we have in Jesus, what this light brings, we're not going to want to stay in this dark place anymore. Let's go on. This gets exciting here. Isaiah 9, 3. It says, You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They'll rejoice before you as people rejoice the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. I love this. He says, This light causes us to rejoice like people during a harvest. So what do we do during these dark times? We plant and we pray. So this word analogy that he's using here, he's talking to people who were harvesters, who were farmers. He's, he's using these word analogies on purpose. God was trying to speak to them in their language in a good place. So what does this mean for us? Seeds are plant, planted in the dark, but they're being nurtured to go into the light. Let me say that again another way. What you're going through in this darkness, God has dreams and hopes and plans for you that you have in your life. And you're saying, okay, God, I'm in this darkness, but I'm going to give this to you in prayer. I'm going to be focusing in. I'm hearing all these other voices in the dark, but I'm going to be focusing in on what you have for me. I'm going to pray about this and plant this. I'm going to be working. I'm not just going to stand idle and say, God, I'm going to wait until everything gets better. No, I'm going to look what you want to do. I'm going to continue to walk forward and do the things I need to do, but I'm planning on you to allow that to grow. And the more and more that we do that, it gets nurtured by God to come into the light. You don't know what God is doing behind the scenes as you're praying, as you're moving. You might be saying, I've been doing a lot of, a lot of praying lately. I've been doing a lot of, of sowing. I've been pushing around these seeds like constantly, constantly, constantly. Guess what? That's a lot of harvest that God can make. It's not something for us to feel dread, but for us to be excited about and say, I can't wait till that's nurtured into the light that God has. I'm excited to see what he's doing important for us to see this. So what else happens when we turn to the light of Jesus? Verse 4, for you will break the yoke of the heavy slavery and lift the burdens, the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They'll be fuel for the fire. So much stuff here. Okay, so what is he saying? You're going to break the yoke. A yoke is a way Jesus would describe a lot with these religious rules that would just weigh people down. It's like, no, what Jesus is going to do is to simplify everything. It's not going to be, I got to impress God. I got to do all this other stuff so God can get me out of this dark place. I'm going to show how great of a servant I am. No, Jesus said, no, my yoke is easy. It's love God, love others. You do that in the dark night, in the dark months, in the light months. That's all I'm asking you to do is be the same person. I'll make the difference. You might learn some stuff during the darkness, but as long as you're just loving me and loving others, that's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to put on all these other heavier stuff to say, I got to do all these things so God will get me into the light. No, I just do who I, I just be who God called me to be, loving God, loving God and loving others. That's it. And he helps for that. And he says, then he will lift the burdens. We can come to Jesus and find relief during these dark months. When's the last time that you were stressed out that you just said, I'm just going to shut everything down. I'm just going to throw on some praise music and just remember that he is king. I mean, honestly, when's the last time you did that? For some of you, it's been a while. For some of you, have never done it. And that's okay. I want to encourage you to do this. Next time you're feeling overwhelmed by everything, say, God, I'm just going to praise you and just put my mind on you. I'm not going to allow this other monologue to go. I'm just going to allow my mind and my thoughts to go on you. And allow help to change everything in there. I love that he says, this, I'm going to break the oppressor's rod, just like I was destroying Midian. I might say, what's, what's Midian? A good way to remember what happened with Midian is to just look at the rhyme of that, Gideon and Midian. It's a good way to remember that. Anyway, so who is Gideon? What does that mean? Insanely, insanely quick way of saying this story. Gideon was a man who was, again, dealing with some really dark months. They had this area that was controlling and was fighting over them. They were wiping out their people left and right, stealing from them left and right. And God comes to Gideon, and he says, hey, I want you to go up against this um, army. And he says, I am a nobody. How many of you have felt like that when you've been in a dark months? I am a nobody. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I got no power. He says, all right, I'm going to have you go out and do this. And so he gets together all these, uh, these people to form an army. And God says, okay, you got too many people. So he has them cut down. Then he said, okay, you got too many people. He has them cut down again. Then they go down to 300 people against tons and tons and tons of people. And he says, okay, now I have, I'm a nobody and I'm following with a nobody group. 
But what do we see here? What do we see? We see that God supplied Gideon's need. You might say, well, where's the hope in this hopeless situation? Where's this hope in this dark place, in this dark month? The hope and the light that's there is found in God, and it's going to look different. It's going to look different than what you think. Gideon thought, if I just get this big army together, then that's going to help it. You might think that for the same thing. Well, if I just do this, this, and this, then I know the light's going to shine back into my life. You might be thinking that, but God might have a totally different plan that's going to blow your mind. That's exactly what they did with Gideon. Everybody was shocked, like 300 people, and they destroyed this entire army. Why? Because God was in the middle of it. It wasn't about them. It was about him. And the more that we start to put our minds in that place, the more we're going to start to see a change that God has for you. Because of Jesus, we don't have to stay in the dark. Let's finish this Isaiah passage. Verse 6 says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The the passionate commitment of the Lord of the Heaven's armies will make this happen. Sad thing is, for most people, this is just a Christmas verse. This should be a life verse. It's important for us to see that difference. Jesus came to bring the light. Are we calling him this light? Look at the things that we should be calling him. Are we calling for his counsel? Are we calling for his wisdom? We're in these dark places. Are we trying to figure out everything on our own? Are we calling for his might? Are we calling for his power? Are we saying, well, it's in my power I'm going to get out of this? Are we calling for his everlasting love? Why does he say that he's everlasting? Because he will never fail us. You might be in the darkness and you need to learn a lesson there, but he's not going to leave you there. He's going to help you to come out. He's never going to fail you. We see that he's called here the, the peace, the prince of peace. That means that completeness. He says, I've come here to make your life complete. You might be feeling, well, I'm in such in this dark area, but that's because we've not allowed his light to make us complete. God's just a Sunday thing or just an early morning thing when we do devotion or something else like that. Our lives aren't complete in him because we haven't allowed him to be complete. There's that difference. It will change everything. If you're in the middle of these dark months, go to Jesus and allow him to bring this light. This is what he has to offer. And it's available for free. We don't have to be stuck in these dark months anymore. We have the opportunity. I love the last line there. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. I believe that somebody needs to hear this, that you are worth Jesus coming into our world. You might be saying, well, I've got myself to this dark place. I've allowed this monologue to be interfered with by stuff I've looked at, by things I've, I've listened to, by all this other kind of stuff, by the situation I've allowed myself to get into. So I've, I've allowed myself to get into this dark place. And, and so, you know what? I, I can't really turn to God for the light when I'm the one who turned my back on him and went to this dark place. One of my favorite verses in the entire Bible is why we were still sinners. Christ died for us. So you don't have to impress me with your love. I'm going to impress you with mine. That's the beauty of it. It's the beauty of it. You are worth him coming to this world. He has that passionate commitment for you, and he's never going to stop. He's going to continue to love you, continue to reach out for you, continue to say, don't stay in that dark place anymore. Come to my light. Allow me to help you. Allow me to work in your life. Maybe you have a hard time believing that today because of that inner monologue that's speaking. As we close and Pastor Vanessa comes up, I want us just to think about this and I want to dispel the lies that a lot of times these inner monologues will say. I mean, I know that Bill and I were joking around here at the beginning and, and talking about all these things about what our inner monologue can talk about, but what's your inner monologue been saying even during this sermon? Maybe you heard a verse and you're like, ah, oh, that's not for me. That's a great way of your mind missing what God has for you. Maybe you're here and you're saying, well, that's for somebody else. No, that's a word for you. This word is for all of us. Maybe you're here and you're thinking about all the dark things that you have done. And you're saying, well, that's for someone else who's worthy of the light. Again, that's a lie. It's important for us to dispel the lies that happen in our lives, to go against these monologues, try to say all these different things. 
It's important. Maybe you're following Jesus, but you're not looking to him during this time. You're stuck in this dark area. Matthew 4, 16 says, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death now casts a shadow, the light has shined. This verse is in relation to that Isaiah verse. That's why I said, look this up later. It's really cool. Talking about how Jesus came. And the interesting thing is these lands that were really worried about this war. It's the first places Jesus came to preach. So yeah, you might be in darkness now, but I'm going to go to your darkness. God personally came to share his light. So you might be really freaked out. You might be feeling that you're lost or forgotten, but I'm going to go there first. Why? Because of my passionate commitment for you. This is the God we serve. We could all stand today. With every head bowed and every eye closed. We always need to start at one simple place. Do we know the light? Do you know Jesus? And just as we talked about before, it's not enough to say, well, my, my family's religious or I grew up religious or I have a religious mindset. Do you know Jesus personally? Are you personally following him? And if you're not, you can start that journey today. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, you're saying, I want to start that journey today. I want you to raise your hand. We want to pray with you what, about what it means to follow in that journey with Jesus. I think that every single one of us have been in a dark place where we've allowed a, a monologue to speak over our lives in different areas that weren't of God. We've all been in that different place in one time or another, but right now I'm talking to people who are dealing with that right now. I've been feeling these dark months and hearing the lies that the enemy has been saying. The Bible talks about us having spiritual warfare, that the enemy is trying to keep us in the darkness, trying to keep us down. But aren't you grateful that Jesus brings the light? He wants to bring that light in your time right now, in your circumstance. So I'm going to pray over all of us. And then if you want some individual prayer, different people from the prayer team are going to walk around. And if you just want some individual prayer, you can just raise your hand. We want to believe with you and pray with you and knowing what God can do in the midst of us praying together, knowing how he's going to shine his light in the midst of that darkness, how he's going to help to turn it around. So whatever you're dealing with, don't just say, I got it on my own. As we talked about the last couple of weeks, we're meant for community. We're meant for times like this. So God, I pray right now as we get ready to go into a time of prayer. God, I pray against every single lie that the enemy has told everyone that is here. God, anybody who's watching online. God, I pray against these things right now in the name of Jesus. You came in this world as that light. God, you came in your passionate commitment. You're not going to leave us in the darkness. Yes, we might be learning some things in the darkness right now, but we're not there by ourselves. We're there with you. God, I pray you'll help us to pray and to plant during these times. And I say, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to be praying right now, and I know you're going to help to nurture this thing into the light. God, I pray that we won't be focusing on our own mindset, God, but we'll be looking to see, God, you are the one who brings the victory. When it doesn't make sense to us, God, you bring it through because, God, you are supernatural. You go beyond our natural, beyond what we can do, just as you did with Gideon. God, I pray that we'll look to you, not just at Christmas time and say, oh, a son was born, that's so nice. We'll think of every single moment what it means for Jesus, for you to be in our life, that you are the counselor, you are the mighty one. God, that you are the prince of peace. God, that we will look to you for all these things. We won't be looking around at everything else. God, the different fears and tremblings and everything else around us, conspiracy theories, we'll look to you. God, we'll turn our ear and allow you to steer us in the way we need to go. We want to go towards your light, to where you want us. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to pray together. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So again, if you're wanting prayer right now, just as the worship team plays, feel free to raise your hand. The, worship team's gonna, uh, the prayer team's going to walk around, and we'll be praying with you. Amen. You know, um, just before we go into the song, um, I just want to encourage you to really... Um, 
take this time. I, maybe you experienced some of the things that we experienced this week. I feel like there's just been, you know, like a little bit of an attack going into today. But I, I think that the reason um, is because God really does want to do something. And he really does uh, want to move with power in your life. And you're here for a reason this morning. So I just invite you to really take this time um, with him. If there's something on your heart or on your mind that you feel like you just need to offer over again to the Lord, um, you know, sometimes it helps just to do a physical act with our hands. Sometimes I just lay my, my, my hands open as though I was offering it up to him again. God, we just want to offer up our lives to you again, our whole lives. So we're so thankful, God, that you are powerful and that you are the living God. You are the light of the world and that you do offer us hope no matter what the situation is that we face today, God. And with our little mustard seed of faith or whether it's a mustard seed or we're coming with a giant, you know, acorn of faith this morning, God, we believe that you're going to move and that we can leave today changed because we've been in your presence and we've been in the presence of the body of Christ, encouraging each other, lifting each other up. God, we're so thankful for that. So I just invite you to stay in this place for a little bit as we um, sing and then we'll close in a little bit.
of wanting prayer or um, just in a space of um, needing to continue your conversation with God this morning, you're welcome to stay there. We're going to play through a little bit more of this song, um, but I'm going to pray for you, and then those of you that are ready to um, be dismissed, you're welcome to go after um, the prayer. So, Father, thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for um, caring enough about each one of us specifically and the little things on our hearts or the great big needs on our hearts and none of it is too small or too big for you you are more than enough and we thank you that we can reach out for prayer or support from our brothers and our sisters here Father God I pray that you would meet each need that is represented here this morning we know that you are faithful, and we know you. we can trust you with that this morning. Thank you for um, new thoughts in our minds as we go into this week. Thank you that we're going to feed our mind with your truth. And I just know that we can look forward to your light increasing on our lives and through our lives to the world as well. Lord, we just bless you. We thank you for this morning. Thank you for each one of the people that joined us this morning as well. Just pray your blessing as they go out this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.